Our Father's Arms, nestled in the beautiful foothills of Appalachia in the southeastern United States and northeast Alabama, Our Father's Arms is a place of healing and deliverance. Each day, we turn our hearts toward God's Word. There's 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs, one for each day of the month. The proverb for the day provides a springboard and commentary to the rest of Scripture. We invite you to join us as we relax, open our Bibles, and trust Him to speak to our hearts. I'm learning to not be upset by someone else who is upset. I'm learning to not let this troubled world get the best of me. I'm learning to not be offended by somebody else's offense. I'm learning to not straddle the fence. (laughs) I'm learning to be free. I'm learning to live the freedom of unfailing love. I'm learning to feel the power that flows from above. I know there's trouble in store. I know there's much, much more. I've yet to learn about living the freedom of unfailing love. The Sermon on the Mount is the key. The Master says, love even your enemy. My worst enemy was in the mirror. And it's getting clearer and clearer to see. If I'm going to love you, I must first let the Master love me. Let me tell you, that's why you're here. That's why He brought us here. To wake us up. Not academics. Not even reason, but revelation. Revelation of what? Of the love of our mysterious, almighty Creator who is love that never fails. That means if there's failure in my life, is anger failure? Let's let's put it this way. Um, Does anger and anxiety and hatred bless you or destroy you? How about depression? Does that kill you and destroy you or bless you? What about addiction? Does that destroy you or bless you? Even if that addiction is on another person. You know how I know I'm addicted to a person? Excuse me. The way I know I'm addicted to another person is I can't get them out of my head. I'm obsessed with another person. (coughs) Addicted to another person. Am I addicted to the approval of other people? Is addiction destroying me or blessing me? It's destroying me. All right, if it's destroying me, that means that's a failure. That's not a successful life. Well, when you've never lived a successful life, you don't know that you even can. And when you've been chained to the walls of a dungeon all of your life and someone is leading you out to the fresh air, it's scary. But something is bidding you come on. Now, if there is destruction in my behavior, in the way I've been trained and programmed to think in this computer right here, I've been programmed to have a fit if I don't get my way. I've been programmed right here to control people. If they don't live up to my expectations, I'm disappointed in them. If God Almighty doesn't live up to my expectation, I'm disappointed in Him. And is disappointment, destruction, and a failure in life? All right, well, if love never fails, and I'm living a failed existence, what's left out? 
A child can see that. Let me regroup here. You know why I'm finding fault with somebody else? That somebody else can be the United States of America or the Baptist or the Church of Christ or the Pentecostals or, the, or, the, uh, or what we call uh, the church today. I can be disappointed in it. And look at the church yesterday, how good they were doing. Look how bad we're doing. I don't, I'll tell you what Christian means to me. It means hypocrite. And so I'm fault finding and I'm belittling and I have no idea that gavel I'm toting around looking for specks in other people's eyes and that log is in my eye. And you know what that log that's in my eye does? It keeps me from seeing the light. And you know what the light is? The light is the Word. And you know what the Word says? I love you through a blood-soaked cross. The war rages on. Violence in our home. Trouble won't leave us alone. It's all we've ever known. Why are we so afraid? Why are we so depraved? Why are we so frustrated and hated from the cradle to the grave? Here's why. We don't know that we're loved. We don't know that we're loved. Or else we wouldn't be so hostile to each other. Or else we wouldn't try so hard to impress each other or else we wouldn't be so indifferent to each other. We don't know that we're loved. So many children underprivileged, we see them everywhere. Affluent cities, third world villages, where the devil doesn't care. A wealthy man commits suicide. A poor man does the same. Middle class complain and struggle and shift the blame trying to survive. <clears throat> Why? We don't know that we're loved. We don't know that we're loved. Or else we wouldn't be so hostile to each other. <clears throat> or else I would not be so hostile to myself by burning myself with cigarettes or cutting myself like the prophets of Baal did. Demonized, totally. Why would I want to hurt me? Did you know that's epidemic? Some of you know. Why do you cut yourself when you're alone? That high you get from hurting yourself. Why would I put out cigarettes on my arm right there? Why am I living a self-destructive life and hating myself because my self-destructive life is helping destroy the ones around me, particularly the children? That's why I hate myself. Why'd I do that? Why'd I live a self-destructive lifestyle? Why do I, why is, why is there something in me that wants to die and get this misery over with? Here's why. We don't know that we're loved. We don't know that we're loved. We includes me. I don't know that I'm loved. Love never fails. My life's a failure. Why? Because love's left out. We don't know that we're loved. On a hill far away. <laughs> Stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. It was on that old cross. The dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Let them know that we're loved. Let them know that we're loved. Give the least of them a helping hand. Let them know that we're loved. <coughs> Do you know you're loved? Not raise your hand or stand up or come up here. In the secret place of you where you're thinking and no one knows. <coughs> That's an altar. It's your own heart. Now it's time to get totally honest with yourself and with the one who created you with the ability to think and knows your thoughts. 
Do you know? Have you known that you're loved? You. Never mind how you've been treated by this world or the people around you. Never mind the betrayals. Never mind the criticism. Never mind the being stolen from. Never mind being treated like a dog and chained and thrown in a cell and then paraded up there in front of the judge. Never mind all that rejection, all that ridicule and everything. Question is, do you know you're loved? Go ahead and say it to yourself and to him. Now he says to you, through a blood-soaked cross, I give my life to heal you with my word. And my word says, never mind the ridicule of this world of people that don't know they're loved. That's not who you are. You're not who they said you were when you were growing up and, and cursed and accused and told you that by, by sick people that don't know their love, told you you're no good and they wished you'd never been born. And when you were raped and thrown away like a piece of trash and walked over and all that rejection and all that hurt and all that ridicule of being used, that's what he went through for you. And he's innocent. And put your attention on him on the cross for you. Copyrighted thumbprint. And he's just got one thing to say to you, and it's not get in church. And it's not get clean. And it's not shame on you. He's got one thing to say to you. I love you. Your mind is going to be okay. I got you covered. Let me love you. Let me lift you high above your fear. Let me love you. Let me love you. Let me give you eyes to see and ears to hear me speak. Let me love you. Child, you've been striving for so long. Fighting to find a way to feel like you belong. But can't you see I love you just like you are? And I've already freely given you the very thing you're grasping for. Just let me love you. Now you are saying right now, as he says to you, will you let me love you? You're saying yes or no. Let me think about it as no. So why not this morning just say yes? Thank you for loving me anyway. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Sunshine shining such a glare, no shade. Sonny been looking for sunglasses all day. You might have overheard a curse word that he said. He looked everywhere, except on top of his head. We've already got what we've been looking for And we've already got what we've been looking for And we're trying to get delivered And we already are, we already got What we've been looking for A little fish swimming in the Atlantic looking for H2O We're on a one-way street fighting over which way to go Jesus cried, it is finished The sin debt is paid the next thing you know, he was raised from the grave. And we've already got what we've been looking for. And we've already got what we've been looking for. And we're trying to get delivered. And we already are. We already got what we've been looking for. 
the main thing is let the main thing remain the the main thing is God's love not our sin the main thing is let the main thing remain the I can't hear you <laughs> The main thing is let the main thing remain the main thing. The Savior came to save, not condemn. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever will trust Him rely on the leaning of His entire human personality upon Him. That's what believe means. Greek words pistuo. Will not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16, John 3.17, but God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He's saying to me, he keeps saying to me, Bob, I don't condemn you. Why are you condemning yourself? <coughs> the main thing is let the main thing remain the, the main thing. <laughs> the main thing is God's love not our sin. The main thing is let the main thing remain the main thing. The Savior came to save, not condemn. And we've already got what we've been looking for and we've already got what we've been looking for and we're trying to get delivered and we already are. We already got Yes, we've already got, oh, we already got what we've been looking for. Amen. Okay, now, <clears throat> I promise you, legalism has its tentacles in every one of us that were born and raised even near the Bible Belt. And you can go to meetings all the time with people with Bibles and you can get, you got to do something to be right with God. Legalism is do right to be right. And you can call yourself a Christian. Well, why does it look like a self-righteous beast that looks like he swallowed a curtain rod. He came walking right up to me, smug and self-righteous, looked just like he swallowed a curtain rod. Squeezed his Old Testament. The dude thought he was heaven sent. He said he came to get me right with God. And all you other infidels who are heading straight for hell, he said, pray with him that he show us what else to do. I said, sir, before you go, there's one thing I'd like to know. If I get saved, will it make me like you? <laughs> there's so many people, I'm a Christian, and they're biting and devouring one another. Where is his trembling fist would pound the pulpit and his eyes shone like fire. Gasped for breath, then he strutted back and forth, claimed he hated drunken bums and liars. Said the Lord and him had come to destroy sin, pass the plate before the church goes broke. Well, I got up and left when he scared his flock to death, commenced to telling them how to vote. And we never once heard him mention the joy and the peace that comes when someone finds the truth. We never did hear him mention the light that leads us home. Oh, Jesus, it's so obvious. He don't know you. He don't know you. Under her arm, she held a Bible in her hand, a collection plate, standing out in front of the green front store, motivated by contempt and hate. She said, you sin and fools, you spend it on booze. Let the Lord have what you got left. But the Lord never got the conscience money. She kept it and spent it on herself. <laughs> and we never did hear her mention the joy and the peace that comes when someone finds the truth. We never did hear her mention the light that leads us home. Oh, Jesus, it's so obvious. She don't know you. In this world of confusion, prophets of doom and disillusion, driving lost and suffering souls further from the truth. And after a day of selfish violence, we hear your voice pierce the deathly silence. 
Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And we never do hear them mention the joy and the peace that comes when someone awakens to the truth. We never do hear them mention the light that leads us home. Jesus, it's so obvious they don't know you. Now, we don't find fault. We don't get judgmental and judgmental people. And oh, where's that place of peace? Where is it? Now listen, somebody tells me all you got to do to be a Christian, all you got to be do to save, you know, get in church or go to hell, you know, do right to be right. That's legalism. It's, if we could do right to be right, he wouldn't have had to die for us, okay? Okay, and so, so it's like you got to do something to be right with God. You got to do something to be right with God. How about this? If you'll pray a prayer with me, you'll be right with God. All you got to do is believe. All right, it's time to get honest, isn't it? I can't make myself believe in somebody I can't see. I can't make myself pretend to be somebody other than me. I can't make myself believe in a world of make-believe. I'd rather quit than be a hypocrite. I prayed a prayer with you. You even baptized me. But nothing changed. Everything remained the same, as lost and confused as I can be. So tired. So weak, too tired to even seek. That's what it took for me to just look. Just look. Just look and you will see the truth. The truth. The truth that will set you free. Just look. Just look. Just look and you will find the missing piece to the puzzle of life. Peace of mind. Just look. Just look. Seeing is believing. The truth in the midst of the lies. Seeing is believing. The Lamb of God was crucified. Soaked in His own blood. Come on. On a cross, He was cursed and died. That's what it took. What's my part? Just look. Just look. Just look and you will see the truth, the truth, the truth that will set you free. Just look, just look and you will find the missing piece to the puzzle of life. The Prince of Peace comes and no matter what's happening around you, He gives you peace and an anchor in the midst of the storm and you are having your mind renewed to the truth that sets you free and that truth is you're loved and now you, what you've been looking for in all the wrong places, it may have been a pipe, it may have been a needle, it may have been a... A, a joint, it may have been a bottle, it may have been a can, it may be all you were doing was you're just trying to meet this need inside of you for Him. Now you start letting, learn, thank you. Now listen, if you got to do something, if you got to do something, I got to do something. I can't you just sit up there and say, thank you God for loving me. I'm just, I got to do something. Well, here's what you can do. Thank Him. Now, please listen to this. Right now, and when you leave this place, if you will, in your heart and in your thought life, keep thanking Him. Because she took all my money and ran off with another man, or he took, used me and ran off with another woman. He just, what do I thank him for, man? They got my kids and they got this. What am I going to thank him for, man? My life's wasted and, and broken and I just made a mess out of it. And I just, what, what the hell am I going to thank him for? Thank him for the blood he shed for you at Calvary that day. He was a sculptor, world renowned. Now all of his sculptures are nowhere to be found. His tools turned to rust, his body turned to dust, as the hands of time must keep spinning around as we hear the sound. Town criers, sellers and buyers, smugglers and jugglers and clowns, strutting on the stage, the rage of the age, until the final curtain comes down. You and I, we say our goodbyes, then bow. All that matters then is all that really matters now. He's a grandpa, feeble and old. He's lived through years of tears and many hearts turn cold. Smooth skin replaced by a wrinkled smile in his face. But there's not a trace of sorrow or fear of tomorrow in his soul. He lost his leg in the Korean War. 
His wife died of cancer in 84. He didn't think he could take anymore, but that was back when. It doesn't seem to matter now. Well, did it really matter then? Town criers, sellers and buyers, smugglers and jugglers and clowns strutting on the stage, the rage of the age until the final curtain comes down. We say our goodbyes then bow. All that matters then, my friend, is all that really matters now. When we've been there 10,000 years and beyond what time will allow, all that matters then, my friend, is all that really matters now. This may, you know, you're hearing the introduction to today's proverb, okay? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know which way the Holy Spirit's going, but I know it's Him. And I could, it's beautiful to me to see. It's like popcorn popping. I, I just see your faces. Only He can do that. Now please listen. If the truth sets you free, is that right? That's right. So it's a lie puts you in bondage. Right. A lie has no credibility. So we're making relevant. We've been trying to make something relevant that ain't even relevant. D dark, did you know darkness doesn't threaten light? In fact, darkness is just the absence of light. So let the light shine. Come on now, look up and see the light because you, you, you're about to be set free by waking up to how much He loves you. And that person that's been unkind to you is just somebody that doesn't know they're loved. Well, let them know that they're loved through you. He'll give you the grace to do it. And you keep doing your thank you therapy. You keep doing it. You don't come off of it. <clears throat> Everything else will take care of itself. Okay, now one more little... One... One dose of truth that rhymes. Okay, one more, I think. <laughs> Whatever time brings your way, time is going to take it away. Friend, family, foe, come and go. Nothing here is here to stay. It's amazing to get to know this Savior and this shepherd who's full of personality. He's just so brilliant and witty. He's not stuck in stained glass. He's so much fun to hang with, you know, and live inside of you. And you know what he says? He says, you're straining on a gnat and swallowing a camel. <laughs> straining on a gnat and swallowing a camel. Straining on a gnat and swallowing a camel is the way we've been living our lives making something out of nothing, nothing out of something. How blind can we be living in a panic, spitting the Atlantic? We take ourselves way too seriously. Living under the S-U-N is all vanity. That's the book of Ecclesiastes. Living under the S-U-N, you set your mind on the things of the world, you're looking to political figures to save you, come on. All we're saying is give peace a chance. That's what the Beatles put it. Just give peace a chance. Let's live and let live. Let me give you this, pass this joint right here. You know how the, you know, wars, rumors of wars, earthquake in diverse places, you know, it's like uh, uh, living under the S-U-N is all vanity. But living under the S O N, Song of Songs, Song of Solomon, right next to Ecclesiastes. Living under the S O N will restore your sanity. Okay, now listen. Life can be F U N. You can, I can live worry free, knowing all is going to be okay. If I will, if you will, go ahead and let go of what you'll have to let go of one day anyway. Now here's a precious thing. You're telling me to give up my kids? No. He's not telling you to give up anything. But it's control of you. You want to love your babies with the love of God that never fails, that is gentle and joyful and patient? He'll restore your family like you would not believe. He'll take you to a whole nother level. He, he, that magic and, and someone sitting here right now that uh, he'll have your loved one, your family member you hadn't seen in a while, you've been worried about and everything else, just show up and they don't even know they're showing up or you're there or whatever. I'm telling you what, you just let him love you 
and you let, and you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and you can do that with thank you therapy, private and personally. It's just like a miracle, man. It's, it's miracles worth waiting on, but it's all in his timing. So I'm not looking to my relationship with my loved ones in order to fulfill my self-esteem. See, that's where you miss it. Your self-esteem can only be validated and verified at the cross. That's where you get your deepest need met. Your deepest need is a need for affection, for significance, for dignity, for respect. For that's, and, that, and when you get a revelation of who He is, He's the one by whom and for whom everything was created in heaven and earth, the visible and the invisible. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who has all power and authority in heaven and earth. And he humbles himself to take and, and washes your feet. He didn't get dirty. But you've got to let him. Just let him love you. All right, that's something you've got to do is thank you. And, uh, and so now we're just going to run right into today's proverb, Proverbs 27. And I've got five minutes. So <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> and I'm not giving you a syllabus or take notes or. Nothing like that. You know, when you leave here, if you don't get anything, but I am loved, you got it all. And, to, and the person you had contempt for, you have compassion for now? I, I tried not to rhyme, but I can't help it. <laughs> you don't understand how they could treat you so bad. You've been taken advantage of by the so-called friend you had. And the more you think about it, the matter it makes you feel, your feelings have been hurt and you got the urge to kill. You got a chip on your shoulder, suspicion in your mind, self-pity parties got you pouting most of the time. You think you deserve better. Well, you better think again. We all deserve eternal hell. Think again, my friend. Who can understand how we, I, could treat him so bad? We, I, sinned and took advantage of the best friend we ever had. Stop and think about it. Jesus died to forgive you. Receive his love and let him love this troubled world through you. He'll take that chip off of your shoulder, drive suspicion out of your mind, call off the pity party and have you shouting most of the time. He bled and died, was crucified. His love will never end. Stop complaining. Start thanking Him and praise His holy name. And you will if you'll just look and let. Here I am, peaceful and settled. <laughs> no strife, no striving. I got no reason to fret. If I'd have been told a few years ago I'd give up drinking and gambling, <laughs> I'd have cussed and said, how much you want to bet? But now it's so plain to see the chains that were binding me are falling away. Thank God I'm beginning to see since He's been loving the hell out of me. He never has to scold me. He's always here to hold me. He's helping me be all He created me to be. Jesus is loving the hell out of me. Now I can see past dying. And these tears I'm crying are tears of joy. Thank God I'm beginning to see since He's been loving the hell out of me. I used to sit around and wonder, what in the world am I doing here? Got to be more to life than living in a constant fear. I even tried to hide. So lonely inside, scared to death of dying down here, dying all alone down here. And every time I'd pass the graveyard, I'd turn and look the other way. I couldn't bear to face the reality that me and my loved ones would die one day. I was like an old scared and scroungy dog gone stray till Jesus took me in, <laughs> began to love my fear away. There is a need inside of you and me. Only He can satisfy. And when I think about all He's done for my family and you and me, tears of joy begin to fill my eyes. All was so hopeless till He saved me. Cleansed by His precious blood, He set another captive free. There is a need inside of you and me. Only Jesus can satisfy. Will you let Him?
How many of you are here for the first time? Okay. Uh, there's a doctor for this. There's a doctor for that. There's a doctor to make you skinny. There's a doctor to make you fat. There's a doctor to fill your brain with equations and things. And there's a doctor to give you a pill when you go insane. There's a doctor for your teeth and there's a doctor for your nose. There's a doctor to kill the fungus among us on our toes. There's a doctor for your tummy. There's a doctor for your skin. Thank God for the doctor called the OBGYN. <laughs> Somebody call me a doctor. Not that kind though. <laughs> There's a doctor for your eyes. There's a doctor for your hair. Look around you, friends. There's doctors everywhere. Just because you a doctor don't mean credibility, and I don't want just any rubber finger poking around on me. <laughs> Be careful when you call me a doctor. I went to the great physician one hallelujah day, full of guilt, regret, and shame. I was to blame for loved ones I had hurt along the way. Then he showed me the scars in his hands and his feet and where the sword pierced his side. And he said, I came to set you free, boy, and let you be a part of my bride. I'd like to recommend the doctor. He said, when you learn from your mistakes, they're not mistakes at all. It's my way of helping you see your need for me and helping you learn to help others when they also fall. Amen. I'd like to recommend the doctor. That's all I'm doing. When you get a hold of something that's totally transforming your life from the inside out, and I'll tell you, I don't know how, how low you've gone, but I've been down there drunk with a pistol to my head. And the whole day consumed with finding a place to use. Decades in a cannabis cloud. If there's a God, I don't like him. I ain't no such thing as gravity. There's just sucks. <laughs> okay, uh, Proverbs 27, 1. <laughs> there's going to be people standing in line at those thrift stores. Say, Where are they at? <laughs> they have been held hostage up there at Jacksonville. Okay, we're uh, about done. I don't know why I do that. You know, time's not a priority here. Grandfather don't even need no clock. Amen. I used to live on memory lane in a place called guilt, regret, and shame. Struggling with a past that I couldn't change, pining my, change, pining my life away on memory lane. So I moved to another house on memory lane, the house of faded, faded glory that left as fast as it came, longing for loved ones gone, hopeless and vain, in the house of faded glory <coughs> on memory lane. So I moved out of there to a place not so far. The street sign said, Anticipation Boulevard. That's today's Proverbs chapter one, chapter, verse 1. So I moved out of there to a place not so far. The street sign said Anticipation Boulevard. Anxiety's house. I couldn't even get out of bed, paralyzed by fear, worry, and dread. So I moved to the inner city. It's a pity, but it's true. Fussing and a fighting all day and night down on Anger Avenue. The turmoil and the strife nearly cost me my life. The same will happen to you if you live on Anger Avenue. Then I heard someone knocking at the door. He said, the whole neighborhood's on fire, man. You don't want to hang around here no more. He said, follow me. I said, okay, from now on, you the boss. Where are we going to go? He said, to my father's house on Reality Road. <laughs> Reality Road, all the doors are unlocked. Time's not a priority here. Grandfather don't even need no clock. Reality Road, Reality Road, the truth that sets you free. It's first and last house on the right. One right there under the light. We stay up and praise him all night. We receive our sight. <laughs> Chapter 27, verse 1, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Now, we, the, we're, we're discovering that the Proverbs is a springboard and commentary to the rest of Scripture. Okay, so hold your place right there. And he said, Don't boast about tomorrow. You don't know what a day may bring forth. 
uh, how, how many of us have been so trained to live in anxiety worrying about tomorrow? And we miss today. Okay, and, and we, are, we are the little rascal's dog, Petey. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Yep. Got the circle around his eye. And they, they tie him to the wagon. And Alfalfa and Spanky and them, they get a stick with a string with a weenie on the end of it. And they hold it in front of Petey and Petey pulls their wagon. And Petey never gets the hot dog. And I have pulled the devil's wagon all my life and never living on Anticipation Boulevard. That's not the abundant life. Mm. Missing this wonderful, glorious experience called life. Worrying about tomorrow. Okay, springboard and commentary of the rest of Scripture. I'm going to read a few verses and then we're done. But I want to show you, you can springboard from that uh, Proverbs 27.1 right over to the book in front of Proverbs Psalms and come with me to Psalm 49. Boy, this will, I, I would encourage you to just... Uh, don't feed on the news. Ain't a bit of hope there. That means they miss the whole thing. All it does is just minister fear. It's the counsel of the ungodly. Okay, now, uh, so, and I would also encourage you to spend more time in the faith book than you do on Facebook. Yeah. Really, really. You get this one-on-one -on -one thing going with him, and you've got to spend time with him. That's how you get to know somebody, spending time with him. And, you know, and when you're spending time with him, you just sit there and listen. And sometimes he just listens. It's just his presence. Okay, Psalm 49. Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world. That includes me. Both low and high, rich and poor together. Hey, I'm in that bunch. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I'm ready for it. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity at my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can say by any means redeem his, can by any means redeem his brother. Even if he lives in a cardboard box called the White House. Boast in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever, that he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit, for he sees wise men die. Likewise, likewise the fool and the senseless person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations, they call their lands after their own names. Jacksonville. Nevertheless, man, though in honor, does not remain. He's like the beasts that perish. This is the way of those who are foolish and of their posterity who approve their sayings. Selah. Selah means pause and meditate on that. Like sheep, they are laid in the grave. Death shall feed on them. The upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave, far from their dwelling. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, and He shall receive me. Is that you? Pause and meditate on that. Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lives, he blesses himself. <laughs> for men will praise you when you do well for yourself. <laughs> well, I want to tell you, it's not the approval of men that makes you a somebody. It's the approval of your God. He demonstrated at a cross one day. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man who is in honor and does not understand is like the beasts that perish. And so, you know, back to the 27.1. And, and go to, um, in your spare time, we don't have time now. You know, one of the things, we used to stay up all night smoking and playing poker. And, and you know, and eight hours seemed like five minutes. It's made, that was a demonized meeting, you know. And, uh, but sometimes when you fall in love with this word, you just lose track of time and everything. And I, 
but the, he's telling me to be considerate of you and, and you've already gotten to run into a fire hydrant and you've had enough of Bob, so we're gonna get on out of here. But I wanna encourage you to do this privately in your own prayer time, is that do not boast about tomorrow. You don't know what a day may bring forth and, and, uh, and you're learning to let go. Now, if you'll go to uh, Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six is awesome, but you head on there to where the lilies of the field are. That's the latter part of, the, of that chapter. But, uh, but the whole time when you're getting there, he tells you to get alone, close the door, get alone with your father and, uh, and do one-on-one -on -one business with the Lord Jesus. That's where you, that's where you really meet him, okay? And, uh, and then he comes and he says, why are you worried about tomorrow? Consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil and spin. Now, I can do that or watch the news. I think I'm just going to turn the news off and I'm going to get in the corner with, with the Word and the living Word. And He shines a light on that written Word. You say, oh my God. If I seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and I do that through thank you therapy and I just keep thanking you, all these other things are added to me. Now, I'm not going to go into it, but this room you're sitting in right here, it looks like we got a bunch of money. We don't have any. Ask Lizzie, our, who keeps our books. We run on empty. <coughs> and when you don't have fundraisers or ask for money or anything, and I'm not, anybody that does, I'm certainly not opposed to that, but I, I've never have been at, at peace with competing with other nonprofits. And quite honestly, God tricked me into doing this and I wanted him to shut it down more, time, more times than not. I didn't, I didn't volunteer for the job. He tricked me. He checkmated me and I, I'm finding myself uh, say, well, you know, maybe it'll shut down if I don't raise any money and it goes broke. And for 20 years, all we've done is, is expand all over the world. That's right. That's right. There ain't no note to burn because there ain't no note. I want to tell you, those, some of you may have passed by here back over a, a seven or eight year period and seen these cement boxes blown all over the floor and, the, and, and erosion, gonna, this house gonna drop off the bank every time it rains, it gets closer and closer and we ain't got no money to fix it. Somebody up calls me one day and, and says, church on Highway 9, Victory Baptist Church died and we're stuck with the building, the Calhoun Baptist Association. Those people don't want another church in their community because our Father's arms use it. He gave it to us. You seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. I've got a, I've got a bunch of stories, y'all. Listen, you don't have to worry about your needs being met. He's your source. Now, I have some, I've got some great godly advice. A friend of mine, you know, who's a good steward and done well, and, and he said uh, he, he loved us enough not to give us money. Uh, and, uh, but, and I didn't care. He said... Um, you need to put back a month's expenses, operation expenses, put it back. You know, if God tells you to. I said, well, okay. And we had some, we put it back and nothing came in till that was all gone. And then it started coming in again. And our Heavenly Father says, Bob, I'm your source. You enjoy today because it glorifies Him and it pleases Him when you enjoy the moment. Now all that stuff that's getting tangled up in your head about people that's hurt you and how you've hurt yourself, you take that to the cross. Let Him love that out of you and do not spend another day postponing your deliverance that He bought for you at Calvary. You let Him love that hell out of you. Will you do that? Will you keep... Now, if you will... If you will say publicly, I'm going to thank him no matter what. In my heart, I'm going to thank him. Now listen, when you're thanking him, criticism and contempt and boo-hoo and blues don't come out of your mouth toward another person. All right, I'm going to bless you, God. I'm going to thank you in my heart and I'm going to keep thanking you till I believe it. When I believe it, I know it's the truth. All right, now... If you will, I hate that word commitment. You know, Peter com committed uh, not to deny him. Um, it's not self-effort commitment. But if you will, if you will say before God and man, I'm going to spend the rest of my life thanking you, not complaining about them. I'm going to keep thanking you. If you're willing to do that, 
then stand up and head out of here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. This is Bob McLeod. If you'd like more information concerning Our Father's Arms, you can write us at Our Father's Arms, Post Office Box 1158, Jacksonville, Alabama 36265, or visit us on the web at www.ourfathersarms.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ continue to give us eyes to see the unseen. Amen. Jesus loves you. Do you know?